Welcome to the first module of the Debug Tools, Tips, and Tricks for LPC-1100 and LPC-1300 families of ARM Cortex-M microcontrollers. This module will cover ISP and valid user code. Subsequent modules will cover code read protection and the use of Segger tools for diagnostic and debug purposes. The 1100 and 1300 families of parts support in-system flash programming by means of an on-chip bootloader. The ISP feature is activated by asserting a low logic level on P01 during system startup. On the 1100 and 1300 parts, P01 may be referred to as the ISP pin for this reason. Once activated, you can use a command line interface or GUI to read, verify, erase, and program the contents of flash memory on your target device. The LPC11C series additionally supports a CAN-based in-system programming mode. The LPC1300 series feature USB-based in-system programming. The full set of ISP commands, their syntax and status codes can be found in the LPC's user manual. It should also be mentioned that many of the ISP commands have analogous in-application programming or IAP commands, which can be invoked programmatically in software. Software can even re-invoke ISP. For more information on this, please read the IAP section of the user manual. I will now demonstrate how to use a simple serial terminal interface to fully erase a device and verify that the memory contents are empty. My hardware setup consists of an LPC Expresso 1114 Revision A Evaluation PCB, which will be used in conjunction with an LPC Expresso baseboard, also a Revision A. I've removed the jumper that enables the serial terminal interface to control the reset line on the LPC-1114. To initiate ISP, I will depress the momentary push button with designator SW1 found in the upper right corner of the board. This button has a label reset just above it. While asserting the reset push button, I will also depress a push button in the lower left corner of the board with designator SW3. This button has an additional silkscreen label, BL underscore EN, or bootloader enable. I'll connect the baseboard to my host computer using USB with the connector X3. I've already installed drivers for the baseboard's USB to serial bridge, but you may find that you'll be prompted to install the drivers the first time you connect. I will now reset the device and enter ISP mode, as described previously. I can confirm that the part is in ISP mode by initiating the handshaking process outlined in the user manual. I will first enter a question mark character, and the device will report synchronized. To allow the device to properly detect my terminal baud rate, I will type back synchronized the device will prompt me with OK when I hit enter. I will next supply the external crystal's operating frequency using kilohertz units. In my case, the clock is running at 12 megahertz, so I will enter 12,000. I'll start by checking whether or not the part is blank. Because the return value is non-zero, I know that there's something running on this device. I will now unlock the device. I will prepare the flash pages 0 through 7 for modification. I will erase all eight flash pages. 
and finally verify that the part is blank. While the command line interface to ISP can be useful as a failsafe, it may not be everyone's preferred method. It's good news, then, that a Windows-based GUI exists to automate many of these tasks. The tool is called Flash Magic and can be used in non-production environments without a license. The latest version of Flash Magic can be obtained at the site www.flashmagictool.com. Flash Magic can do all of the operations supported by the ISP mode of the 1100 and 1300 parts. I will now demonstrate how to use Flash Magic to program a simple application. Again, my hardware setup consists of a baseboard and an LPC 1114 evaluation board. I'll be using a previously generated hex file as my program, which simply blinks an LED. I'm going to preemptively focus on a portion of memory on the input hex file that I'll be programming the device with. The significance of this address will be shown later in the presentation. I'm going to confirm that my target hardware has been properly selected, that the right COM port has been chosen, and that the crystal frequency is also correct. I'll do a blank check and confirm that the part has been properly erased. When programming, I'll choose the option to erase the entire flash contents as well as verify programming. I'll choose my input hex file and program the device. Now that my device has been programmed, I'll read back the contents of Flash. Notice there's a difference at address hex 1c. Compare it with the input program image. You may be curious as to why there's a difference. The answer has to do with the LPC 1114's bootloader and user code validation. The bootloader on the LPC-1100 and LPC-1300 devices will fall back into ISP mode if the part has been programmed with an invalid file. The reason the memory readback included a checksum was due to the fact that Flash Magic will automatically calculate and insert the CRC during programming. Most vendor tools will also insert the CRC but you should be careful and ensure that your program images contain a proper CRC. Failure to properly include the CRC will cause the part to boot into ISP mode even though the flash may have user code programmed onto it. As will be shown later in this demonstration, this is critical when using USB-based ISP on the 1300 part family. IAR Embedded Workbench will automatically insert the CRC into hex output files. However, it will require a post build action to insert the CRC into binary output files. Again, the binary output files require a CRC when used with USB based in system programming on the LPC 1300 part family. But it may also be required for other production programming tools as well, and in general is a recommended practice. At the time of this recording, the Kyle toolchain does not support CRC insertion into either output format. NXP has been informed that a future release will address this issue. In the meantime, the CRC can be manually computed, or if your development environment has either an installation of IAR or LPC Expresso, you can make use of their included tools to insert the CRC 
into output files generated by Kyle. Also note that when programming parts using the Kyle flash loader, the CRC will be inserted and your debug sessions will function. LPC Expresso uses the GNU toolchain and is capable of generating both binary and hex format files with CRC insertion. To do this, simply add the following build steps to your project as needed. Be sure to check for the comment indicator if you're using a stock project. If the comment is present, the hex file will not be generated. This concludes the discussion of valid user code. Next on the agenda is USB-based in-system programming for the LBC 1300 part family. The LPC 1300 family of parts, in addition to serial-based in-system programming, can be configured at startup to use USB. Here the device will enumerate on the host computer as a mass storage controller. This is done by not only asserting the ISP pin at system reset, but also P03, the USB mode pin. The device's flash contents can then be accessed through the Windows file system. To demonstrate this, I've put all the jumpers on the baseboard into their default positions. What's great about this USB mode is that you won't be required to use any additional programming hardware or software. For this demo, I'll be using the USB connector labeled X1. This is connected to the LPC 1343's USB port. I'll reset the device and assert the ISP pin to bring it into ISP using USB mode. Now my computer has presented me with a new removable disk. CRP will be covered in the next module, but if you're already familiar with it, notice how the volume's name contains the CRP level. The disk displays a file named firmware.bin, which represents the contents of flash memory. I've already erased this device, so we can inspect it, and by switching to a hex editor, confirm that the memory contents are empty. I've already prepared a binary, and confirmed that it contains a valid CRC. To program the device, I simply delete the existing firmware.bin file and drag any binary format file onto the volume. When I reset the device, I'll confirm that it's been programmed by the tricolor LED cycling as seen here. By learning about the LPC bootloader, and ISP, you can save development time and money by being able to program your devices with ease. By learning the details of how the bootloader validates user code, you can generate program images with confidence and avoid accidental invocations of ISP. For more information, visit the NXP support resources included below. I hope you've benefited from this presentation, and thank you for your time.